Um, my father learned a trade over in uh, Europe before he came. He was he made pots and pans, isn't that it? There he told you he made pots and pans. He was a metal worker. Hmm. And then when he came to this country, I don't think he stayed in New York very long. He went to Detroit for some reason. Now maybe because of the automobile industry there. And he told us that he made the first, if I'm wrong in any of these things that he told you, dear, you tell me. He made the first Dodge by hand. He, you know, knew how to. So he, uh, he had um, instructions he from had, the engineers as to what to do, but they had not yet made the, the they machinery. They had made the first So he machine, made a prototype. He made the mm -hmm. first Dodge by hand. And uh, for some reason, he, uh, when he was in Detroit, he was married to Aunt Millie's mother. And for some reason, I don't know why, he came to... Um, came east around the uh, Allentown, settled in Allentown. But I remember living in Bridgeton, New Jersey for a while. Hmm. He, I think he worked for somebody. I think the man's name was Cutler or something. But I don't know what he was doing exactly. Something in the fixing automobile or doing something. I don't, I don't know. To back up a bit, did he ever talk about why he and his family uh, came to this country? What was so bad in the he, village? And, he in the never old mentioned anything bad in the village, except that I think most uh, Jews came for a better life. Why does anyone migrate? He never spoke about anti-Semitism or being picked on by anyone or anything like that. He just came to do better economically, I think. Because generally the uh, the Jews in the shtetls were poor. Mm -hmm. They were poor. I mean, they may have had a trade like a shoemaker or something like that, but they were basically just poor working men. And uh, what I found out from uh, my sister's mother-in-law, as I told you, she used to tell a lot of stories. Of course, she came from Russia. It may have been Poland also, but a different part. And uh, somebody, the names, if you have seen the movie Fiddler on the Roof, it was not like my father's name, Louis Schechter. Uh, if he was uh, a baker, it would have been Louis the baker. Mm -hmm. Or it would have been so-and-so the tailor. Or so-and-so the the rap, you know, whatever it is, they were so and so with the trade, whatever they did. But they probably came for economic reasons. They, nobody was educated much. Maybe somewhere, I think in Germany, the Jewish people were better educated. But from the other countries in Europe, uh, they were not. And he spoke uh, Yiddish, that was his native language. Well, I imagine he spoke Polish at one time. I never heard it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one thing about the Jewish people when they came to this country. They spoke English, or they tried to, it was broken English, even, you remember Grandpa, he didn't speak perfect English, but it was English, and they, we always, they always spoke English in the home. The only time they spoke Yiddish was when they didn't want me to know what they were saying. And uh, that's one of the things, you know, I shouldn't take time on the tape for this, that I do fault the Mexicans for, because they still speak Spanish in the house, and I think that helps their development. At the same time, it would, be, it would have been wonderful had I learned Yiddish. Well, we did send you, <laughs> we did send you to a school, right. a suburban Jewish school, right. did teach you Yiddish. Yiddish? I don't remember. Yeah. Just okay. They started, it was not Hebrew at that point. But Yiddish is not really. I don't even remember. See, that's it. But nobody speaks Yiddish, not that's even true. in Israel. Mm -hmm. It's a dead language. Okay, going back to um, the story, uh, could we just talk about the uh, the 
career of uh, your father, Louis Schechter. He started out uh, then uh, doing then various body to, work. Yeah. I remember visiting his uh, body shop That's in Allentown. Right. He also he had a bowling did. alley, didn't he? Well, he, when I was a little girl, he tried, he set up businesses for the body shop many times. And uh, my body shop, I mean, that's repairing uh, automobiles that were an accident. And he would fail, and then he would try again and set up a business and fail again. But eventually, he he met this man. Uh, his last name was Remington. I don't remember. It's Mr. Remington. You might remember. I remember Mr. Mr. Remington. Mr. Remington. He teamed up with Mr. Remington, and the minute he turned teamed up with Mr. Remington who was a uh, Gentile, somehow it, it worked. Mr. Remington didn't know the business like my father did, but he was good at getting out and giving estimates, meeting people, and uh, getting the jobs from the insurance companies, etc. And uh, my father was the workman. He's the one that knew how to do the work in the shop. So Mr. Remington was the outside man, my father was in the shop, and the, the, the business uh, flourished. And then they both invested in the uh, bowling alley, which they uh, kept for many years until they got, both got very elderly and they sold it.